despair has turned to anger at India's failure to control this latest, most lethal COVID wave. Staff at Mumbai's Vinayaka Hospital try to calm a near riot as bereaved families demand to know why oxygen wasn't available to save their loved ones. Only last month, the Indian government announced it was winning the war against the virus, a claim that proved horribly premature. This weekend, News at 10 filmed COVID patients lying untreated on the ground outside one of the biggest hospitals in Patna, southeast of Delhi. The intensive care units are full again, so relatives had turned the hospital grounds into a makeshift waiting room. We are here for the medical treatment. Uh, although beds are full, we are trying to get admission in the hospital, but they are uh, refusing to get uh, admitted. The, we are very, very in critical conditions. Mm -hmm. The current surge that has seen other hospitals convert reception areas into COVID wards is driven by new variants of the virus that already pose a threat beyond India's borders because of the speed they can spread between old and young. This mutant virus is affecting uh, lungs and damaging lungs at a much faster rate and the rapidity with which this virus is spreading is uh, faster as compared to the uh, last wave's virus. The Indian government has been criticised for allowing, even encouraging its vast population to ignore safeguards. The Kumela pilgrimage, where millions of Hindus symbolically cleanse themselves in the Ganges, has been permitted to go ahead with no sign of social distancing. A marked contrast to the message doctors are sending out. You have to be very careful. That is a special request. Please do that. As the government belatedly responds to the new crisis, there is further embarrassment as a nation that manufactures 60% of the world's vaccine finds itself struggling to protect its own population. Supplies are short, queues getting longer. Perhaps the most poignant sign of India's current plight are the funeral fires that now burn day and night to keep up with the ravages of the virus. Awaiting his turn is Arjun Kumar, with the flower-draped body of his 55-year-old father, Dayal Singh. Due to lack of machinery. He tells us his dad died because they didn't have the life-saving equipment or even a bed to treat him. Arjun's father is one of almost 180,000 Indians lost to the virus. And the funeral pyres will continue to burn round the clock as scientists fear this wave is some distance from reaching its peak. Paul Davis, News at 10.